I, I spent seven years writing this, um, so I want to hammer that home a lot. Um, kicking beats from the cells <laughs> fuels my writing, um, and um, but 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 honestly, um, it's it's it takes a long time to get it. Uh, into this kind of shape. Uh, and, and that's an enormous act of faith, isn't it? Um, we have tragic acts like today when you realize, you know, tomorrow is not promised, and yet you endeavor to write things that you know are going to take years. Um, and so that paradox and that um, sort of schism is sort of in all of it. But I want young people to start writing. That's why we have 20,000 students seeing Hamilton every year, um, because I'm, I'm really excited about what they're going to write. You know, we live in this world where beautiful and horrible things exist at the same time and sometimes on the same day. And so, so uh, you can't let that go by. You can't let that moment go by, particularly when theater is the cornerstone of, of you know, it, <laughs> theater doesn't exist with the LGB, without the LGBTQ community. It's the cornerstone of our industry. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, it's, it, it was, it's heavy in my heart today. This has everything I had inside me. Um, there are arcane references that I'm not even aware of until someone on Twitter points it out to me and I go, oh yeah, I was probably thinking about that when I wrote this. Um, the most, my favorite conscious one is there's a podcast I love from three brothers from Huntington, West Virginia. It's called My Brother, My Brother and Me. Great job. Um, and uh, they're hilarious. And so one day I found myself writing unless, unless in their exact vocal cadence. So to Travis and Griffin and Justin, great job. I intend to drop in on this thing. I, I, I feel very lucky that I've built something that I can drop in on um, over and over again. So <laughs> I want to cut to like 20 years from now. You want to like, Lynn, when will you stop playing Hamilton? I think the most interesting thing that I've learned is that because only one person gets up to accept it, I thought that it was you get it for a solo effort. I thought that you get it because you're just so fabulous on your own that you can sort of work your way into getting one of these. And I, I didn't realize what a team of people uh, it would take. I mean, it's really, it's like, it's a lot of people. I'm leaning on the support of a lot of people. You know, somewhere along the way, I, I, lost, I lost this vision. I really didn't have this vision. Meeting this material awakened this again in me. I've said this before, that this show has, you know, um, sort of helped me find some direction, helped me find some purpose again. Uh, this is um, what I always felt like I was meant to be doing, but I was waiting for, I was waiting for Lynn to write it. <laughs> <laughs> we were in rehearsal when we found out, and it just feels so futile. It's like maybe we should pack it up. Maybe we should, you know, what are we doing? What is all this about? And then we had a show today. We had a 2 p.m. show. And there are people in that room, you know it, who spent every dime they had to be there. There are people in that room that have been waiting for nine months. They bought that ticket in December at Christmas time for the day of the Tonys, you know? And so, uh, that was repurposing, that was refocusing, because I said we can't let him take that from those people. He can't have that. Lesson. My wife and I bought, uh, we bought uh, Beyonce tickets. We can't go right away, right? <laughs> we bought Beyonce tickets for September. Now come hella high water. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that, is, that is hope for people. That is hope. That's what, that's what something like this represents. Somebody looks forward to something like that. They, they pay their money. That is, that is a bastion of hope for somebody. So that's what we were today. I, I believe that even if people couldn't watch the show today because they weren't in, the, in a place, they couldn't watch the Tonys today, they'll watch it. They'll watch it a week from now. They'll watch it two weeks from now, and it will make them feel better. They will, you know, it will bolster them. My brother is 80, my brother has dementia. My brother is very much uh, alive in me every time I play Andre in The Father. He's doing well, he goes in and out, but I'm not alone in this. I, 
I've never played a role in which so many people come backstage and sit on the floor of my dressing room and weep, not necessarily because of my performance, but because of how many of us are dealing with people who are losing reality and people who suddenly don't know who you are. That's been the most powerful, powerful thing I've discovered in this is that the caregiver is very often much more in pain because they're so used to the person knowing who they are and then one day the person looks at them blankly and doesn't remember years of eating together, love making, having children, going on vacations. They're just a stranger. Very painful. After the matinee, I would say about 5.30 or 6 when I got home, I tore up the original speech and I thought I should try to find something. I hope it wasn't over the top. I just thought it should be some reference to it. It's real life and as important as this is, um, I just felt I had to say something about it. Honestly, um, disgust, anger, tremendous pain because, you know, I'm now um, a 78-year-old man and I react to things far more profoundly than I did when I was 60, when I was 50 or 40. Um, this constant um, violence and sense of madness that seems to be pervading this country is terrifying me. And that's why, in a way, when Susan asked me what I did, I did it because of that. This is a night for uh, celebrating very talented people, but I'm, I meant what I said. There's no greater group of people in a room who will band together and do everything possible to help those in Orlando. The theater people are really the most generous in the world. When the theater works, there's nothing more thrilling in the world because it's immediate and there's a certain kind of alchemy. There's an exchange of energy that happens between an audience and the performers. And it's palpable when you're on stage. And there's something, sometimes when you know I'm doing a scene, you know, specific lines, I'll hear someone in the audience respond audibly. And there's something about that exchange, you know, that's like, it, it's thrilling and it just kind of like boosts you. And one night we were sitting at dinner and I happened to mention to him that Mary Tyrone, which I played 16 years ago in London, remained like the greatest part I ever had and my favorite role. And I said how much I would like to revisit it because I always find coming back to something after a lapse of time, you know, that there's something, you bring something back to it when you revisit a, a role. And the next thing I knew, he had secured the rights. And, you know, then we brought it to the roundabout and got it set up there. And yes, so it was, uh, it was through his good friendship and graces that we did this production. I mean, I've played Blanche three different times. That would have been like the natural one to say, but of course I've outaged Blanche by several decades, so you know, that's out of the question now. I've played Amanda Wingfield twice, um, and now Mary Tyrone, but I have to say of everything I've done, Mary Tyrone remains like the, the nearest and dearest to me. But with any great part, um, there's a time in your life where you come to it and something happens between you and the character. I have found that several times in my career along the way. And, you know, I didn't have, I mean, I, I enjoyed playing it uh, in London years ago and I know the performance was good, but this time I came to it and it felt explosive. And I think in a way it has to do with what you bring, you know, your life history, your life experience, you, you know, and um, and somehow this one had that had that feeling to it. So, you know, this is such a huge play, and there's so much dialogue that unless I could find a, a, a big range that I could move back and forth with, that you know, it would become tedious somehow. So. I really concentrated more this time than I ever have before on the voice. Yeah.